write down everything you can about these two objects. Here we are moving right and speeding up. And here we are moving right and slowing down. We know we're speeding up because the acceleration is pointing in the same direction as the velocity. Now, um, a good way to express that in physics is to say that here the acceleration is parallel to the velocity. And here we would say the acceleration is anti-parallel to the velocity. I hope those terms are pretty commonsensical now that you can see the picture. Um, so these, uh, these two vectors would be called parallel, and I hope you can see why these would be called anti-parallel. Um, pointing in the opposite direction. So those are real useful terms that we should get comfortable with. Parallel doesn't just mean parallel, it also means pointing in the same direction. And anti-parallel means um, the normal sense of parallel, but pointing in opposite directions. All right, so again, we could say when the velocity and acceleration are parallel, then you're speeding up. And when the velocity and acceleration are anti-parallel, you're slowing down. That would be a good thing to put in your notes. That's just another way of saying that when the velocity and the acceleration are pointing in the same direction, you're speeding up. And when the velocity and the acceleration are pointing in opposite directions, you're slowing down. Let me remind you that everything we're talking about here is strictly um, true just for one-dimensional motion. In two-dimensional motion, there's a kind of more complicated relationship between velocity and acceleration. One thing that's always true is in both one- and two-dimensional motion, the acceleration does not tell you which way you're moving because that's the velocity's job. In both one-dimensional and two-dimensional motion, um, it's the velocity that tells you which way you're moving. Um, now, in one-dimensional motion, the acceleration, acceleration's job is to tell you whether you're speeding up or slowing down. Um, in two-dimensional motion, the acceleration has another job. So in two-dimensional motion, the acceleration still tells you whether you're speeding up or slowing down, but it also tells you one more thing as well. The acceleration gives you a little extra information when you're doing a two-dimensional motion. Um, you might just kind of right now think of it about that as a little puzzle. Um, in one-dimensional motion, the acceleration's job is just to tell you whether you're speeding up or slowing down. In two-dimensional motion, the acceleration still has the job of telling you whether you're speeding up or slowing down, and it has a second job as well. You might try to um, think about that for a while. What do you think its other job is? Um, if, if you're already a few weeks into your physics class, you're supposed to know the answer to that. Um, we're not going to actually talk about that right now. I'm not going to answer that puzzle because in these videos we're just covering one-dimensional motion. But I just wanted to make clear what we're talking about here is one-dimensional motion. In two-dimensional motion, things are a little bit more complicated. In two-dimensional motion, the acceleration and the velocity have a slightly more complicated relationship. Hopefully I'll get a chance to make a video about that, but that's not what we're talking about now. In one-dimensional motion, the acceleration just tells you whether you're speeding up or slowing down. In this case, um, we're speeding up. So is the acceleration positive or negative? Let, let's focus on this case here. In this case, when we're speeding up, is the acceleration positive or negative? I hope you thought about that. That was kind of a trick question. I think most people would say it's positive, but the answer is you can't tell. It depends on what you chose as your positive direction. Let's say that we chose to the right as our positive direction. Well, then the velocity would be positive and the acceleration would be positive because they're both pointing to the right. But let's say we chose to the left as our positive direction. Here's how we could write that to the left is our positive direction. Well, then the velocity would be negative, and the acceleration would be negative. All right, so you can't assume that when you're speeding up, the acceleration is positive. That doesn't work. You've just seen that when you're speeding up, the acceleration could be negative, um, depending on what you've chosen as your positive direction. You can choose whichever direction you like as your positive direction, as long as you're consistent about it. If you decide to choose left as positive, then the acceleration when you're speeding up would be negative. Um, in most problems, it's smartest to choose the direction of motion as the positive direction. You probably would be best off here choosing to the right as your positive direction, and then these things would both come out to be positive. Um, it's really a pretty good habit to usually choose the direction of motion as your positive direction. 
But that's not always the most convenient thing to do. And you can see situations where we don't choose the direction of motion as your positive direction. So you should not get into the habit of thinking that just because you're speeding up, the acceleration is positive. Um, so whether the acceleration is positive or negative, that doesn't tell you directly whether you're speeding up or slowing down. You have to compare the acceleration to the velocity to see whether you're speeding up or slowing down. For example, how about down here? Um, in this example, we're slowing down. Down here, we're slowing down. If we're slowing down, is the acceleration positive or negative? If we're slowing down, is the acceleration positive or negative? I hope you thought about that. Um, it was another trick question. You can't tell. You can't tell whether it's positive or negative until you choose a positive direction. Until you choose a positive direction, you don't know um, whether slowing down means positive or negative. Um, up here, we chose to the left as our positive direction. Well, if we stick with left as our positive direction, then this acceleration here is actually positive, right? The acceleration is to the left, and um, our positive direction is to the left. So even though we're slowing down, our acceleration would be positive. It would be our velocity that was negative. Maybe this kind of shows why it's better to choose the direction of motion as your positive direction, because then things come out more intuitively. That's usually a good habit, but it's important to understand how to deal with it if you don't choose the direction of motion as your positive direction. So I do want to emphasize, um, slowing down is not synonymous with a negative acceleration. What, what, what can we say, then, about the sign of the acceleration? Well, remember, you, you, it's hard to interpret the acceleration unless you compare it to the velocity. Remember that if the acceleration is parallel to the velocity, you're speeding up. And if the acceleration is anti-parallel to the velocity, you're slowing down. So how can we use the signs then? What we should say is that if the acceleration has the same sign as the velocity, then you're speeding up. And if the acceleration has the opposite sign to the velocity, then you're slowing down. That's how you can use the signs. So what matters is not whether the acceleration is positive or negative, what matters is whether what the acceleration sign is compared to the velocity sign. We've already seen this. It's hard to interpret the acceleration unless you compare it to the velocity. You can't really interpret the sign of the acceleration unless you compare it to the sign of the velocity. I'll say that again. Um, if the acceleration has the same sign as the velocity, then you're speeding up. And if the acceleration has the opposite sign to the velocity, then you're slowing down. You can see that here in our examples. In this case, we were speeding up. It turned out that the acceleration was negative because we chose left as our positive direction. If we choose left as the positive direction and we're accelerating to the right, that would be negative. Um, but since we're speeding up, that must mean the acceleration and the velocity have the same sign. And that turned out to be the case. When you're speeding up, the velocity and the acceleration are parallel, so they must have the same sign. And when you're slowing down, you can see, just as I predicted, the velocity and the acceleration will have opposite signs because they have to be anti-parallel. So again, you can't just look at the sign of the acceleration. You have to compare the sign of the acceleration with the sign of the velocity. Again, we'd probably be better off choosing um, the direction of motion as our positive direction. Since we're moving to the right here, it, it, in most problems you're going to want to choose to the right as your positive direction. But now let's work out the signs. Velocity is to the right, so it's positive. Acceleration is to the right, so it's positive. Velocity is to the right, so it's positive. Acceleration is to the left, so it's negative. Again, the signs have all changed, but what hasn't changed is that when you're speeding up, the velocity and acceleration have the same sign. And when you're slowing down, the velocity and the acceleration have opposite signs. All right, so again, if something is slowing down, that does not guarantee that the acceleration is negative. If something is slowing down, that does guarantee that the acceleration has a different sign than the velocity. I think that's important. Uh, but again, you usually should choose the direction of motion as your positive direction. Well, if you choose the direction of motion as your positive direction, then when you're slowing down, the acceleration will be negative. But you always have to check what you've chosen as your positive direction.